guys, it's Alice and welcome to another reading vlog. Today, since it's nearing the end of October, I thought we could have a very cozy and warm, lovely, kind of spooky, like, reading evening. Honestly, it's not even that cold in here, I just love blankets. And yeah, my whole plan for the evening is just to read and I'm gonna make some cupcakes because I kind of want cake and then I might watch a movie, I don't really know. We'll see how it goes with the books and what I feel like towards the end of the evening. Now you guys may know that I'm not really into like scary things, I don't like horror movies, I barely read like any horror books. But there's a movie I really want to rewatch, and it's not a Halloween movie, I just feel like it's perfect for this time of year. There's something about it that reminds me of like fall, and it's The Mummy, <laughs> the one from 99. It's getting so old. But I haven't watched that movie in ages, and I just came across it the other day, and I was like, ooh, I really want to rewatch it. I don't remember a whole lot from it, but I do have some vague memories of some very intriguing plot. So I might end up watching that, but I'm gonna try to spend the majority of the evening eating the cupcakes that I'm gonna make and reading, and I thought I would show you what I'm currently reading. If you can hear any noise in the background, my dishwasher is on, so if it's making like some background noise, I'm sorry, but it's just... You know, it's just there, doing its thing. <laughs> the books that I'm reading right now are these two books. I'm rereading The Secret History by Donna Tartt. This is one of my favorite books of all time. It's not like Halloween-y or scary at all. It's just a book I associate with fall. I feel like it's very like dark academia, so I'm loving rereading this. I'm not that far into it, but I'm really enjoying it. And then I'm reading something that is a little spookier, and it is Something Wicked This Way Comes by Ray Bradbury. And this is... I'd say that this is a pretty perfect book for Halloween. It's set in the last week of October, and from what I've read so far, we have met two teenage boys. They are both 13. Which I... are you a teenager when you're 13? I feel like maybe you are. Anyways, they're about to turn 14, and... They live in this little town, and there's a storm coming into this town. That's kind of everything that's happened so far. And some, like, weird dude has tried to... He, like, gives them something to divert lightning, like one of those things you put on top of your house, I think. And now this storm is coming, and then I think a dude has seen... <laughs> a dude. <laughs> a man has seen a poster for a circus that is coming into town. Now, as far as I know, the scary part of this book is the circus, because apparently these two boys are supposed to have this really nightmarish experience with the circus, so I'm very, very interested to see how that's gonna go. I wonder how, like, scary or creepy it's gonna be, because this was published in the 60s, I think, and sometimes, like, old scary things aren't really that scary, so I'm very interested to see how, like, dark this gets. This is also my very first book by Ray Bradbury, which is pretty exciting. I know that he wrote Fahrenheit 451, 541, something like that, and it's supposed to be, like, amazing. So I'm interested to see how this writing style will work for me. So far it's pretty alright, it's a little like old-timey, but it's pretty good. Now I might read a little bit in The Secret History, like in between chapters of this. We'll see how it goes, sometimes I like need to take breaks when I'm like trying to read a lot in a book, so I might use this as like taking breaks from this. But we'll see, the chapters are pretty short, so it feels like a pretty quick read, and the font isn't like super tiny, so... I think this is gonna be pretty interesting. I feel like, I hope the sun sort of sets soon because I feel like this would be perfect to read when it's like dark. The sun is starting to set a lot earlier in the evening now, which is kind of nice. It's not great for like vlogging <laughs> because it gets so dark in here, but for like 
the atmosphere for me it's nice to have like some darkness I guess so I think maybe I should go and start those cupcakes, I'm not gonna lie, getting out of this couch right now is gonna be very difficult because I'm very comfy and warm, but yeah, I should probably do that, I really want cake also. Like, the struggle is real between remaining on the couch in my natural cozy state and baking something I really, really want to eat, so yeah, I should probably go bake. <laughs> I'm gonna make like the most basic cupcakes in all the world. I was thinking of making like some cool Halloween cupcakes and I I just can't be bothered. So I'm gonna make like vanilla lemon ones with maybe some poppy seeds and then just like a nice thick, what do you call that thing that goes on top? Topping? I don't know. But I'm gonna make that. I bought some like, what do you call, I don't, I don't know how to speak English in the slightest. What do you call those things you put the cupcake in? The cup? I don't know. But I bought some of those, like the paper ones, that are Halloween themed. So we're, that's, yeah, that's as close to Halloween cupcakes as we're gonna get today. <laughs> So my whole apartment smells like cupcakes now, which is the best, and I'm just gonna wait for them to cool off so I can put the frosting on and then I can eat them, which is very exciting. While they were in the oven, I read another two chapters of this, and to be honest, not a lot happened. There was just a little bit more, like, murmurs about the circus, but that was kind of it. While I was baking, though, I was listening to the podcast, This Podcast Will Kill You, which is one of my favorite podcasts. It's run by two epidemiologists, I think is what you say. They study diseases. And the whole podcast is about diseases. And it's absolutely fascinating. And I think I discovered it like last year. And then I listened to all of the episodes. And then I just kind of... <laughs> fell off it a little bit because they had like a pretty long break but now I'm back into it and it's very very interesting. I've made it to some episodes that came out in March and they're all about the current COVID thing. It's really interesting. They are making like a whole series all about COVID and I'm interested to see like how it progresses because now these episodes are from March and now it's October and we know hopefully a little bit more and as far as I can tell they do like update episodes so I'm excited to listen to all of them it's very it's like horrifying but also really interesting they take a very interesting approach to these things I think and it's very accessible and informative and they're also like funny but not overly so and both of them are named Aaron which I think is really funny. One thing I really like about these COVID episodes is that they have experts on. They do that in other episodes too like when they feel like maybe they don't know that much about it they'll have someone come in and talk to them but they're doing it with the COVID episodes too and I think that's very very interesting. I'm also a little bit surprised with myself that I am actually enjoying listening to those episodes because I feel like most of us have like COVID fatigue <laughs> nowadays, but it is actually very interesting. I really like learning about how diseases work and what they actually do in the body and like just general pandemic stuff is in and of itself I think fascinating. It's just not that fun to like live during one. <laughs> Luckily though, I have books, cupcakes, and also free healthcare, so I am not gonna complain. <laughs> Anyways, I am gonna continue reading now. I kind of hope that this, I know I only read like two chapters just now, but I hope <laughs> it picks up a little bit soon. I hope we get to the actual like circus part soon because I am ready to get into that.
So it's now completely dark outside and I've eaten some of my cupcakes, which were very satisfying. And I made a little bit of progress on this. What's going on now is that the carnival has made its way into town. They come in the middle of the night by some train and these boys hear the train and they run out to see them set things up, which by the way, <laughs> don't be running into the night at like 3 a.m. because just like don't do that and then the carnival seems to like get built kind of weirdly i didn't really understand that part but it seems to be a little mysterious and there's some sort of like musical instrument that's playing by itself and it's like super weird the next day the boys they go to this carnival or circus or whatever you call it and they like wander around a little bit and they run into their teacher and she goes into a mirror maze and one of the boys has a really like weird feeling about it so he goes like don't go in there but she goes anyway and she like has she freaks out and she thinks that she sees some woman that she doesn't really under like she doesn't understand what she saw but she says that she saw herself but the way she was like years ago. I don't really know what that means, but it freaked her out and it freaked the boys out and yeah, that's kind of everything that's happened so far. There's also a little bit in here about one of the boys' father who seems to be like having some sort of existential crisis. He feels like he's getting kind of old, but he has this young son, so he's kind of like struggling with that and some of the chapters are from like his perspective. I am really enjoying this but I do feel like it's a little bit slow. Maybe I'm jumping the gun a little bit because I'm only a third of the way through but it just feels like it. it's sort of meandering a little bit and some parts are a little vague which I don't love and maybe it's just the writing style, I don't really know. But I'm interested to see more of this like circus and carnival or whatever it is and learn maybe a little bit about the people that work there and figure out what's going on because there seems to be something weird and kind of dark and this is a fantasy novel so I'm assuming there's gonna be some of that so I'm gonna keep reading I have an ASMR room on which is a Halloween one which is very atmospheric and cozy and I've got a candle so I'm gonna just relax and keep reading. So it's getting kind of late now and I have made quite a lot of progress on this it's getting pretty good now, it's very interesting. I'm not entirely like convinced with the writing style. I don't know, I wouldn't say I dislike it, but there's something about it that I don't love. And I, I don't know if it's just that this book is a little bit older, I don't really know, but the plot is getting pretty good. We have met some of the characters from the carnival and all of them are like way off. Like there's something wrong with everything about that place. And it's just like, I like the atmosphere and I like the, just the setting I think is really interesting. I think there's a lot of like going back and forth and I would have liked to just spend like more substantial time at the carnival, but maybe we get that later, I don't know. But we have like, we have like a scene with a 40 year old man who works at this carnival and he like runs on a carousel that goes backwards and then there's a song playing backwards and these boys, they witness it and whatever he does makes him age backwards. So by the time he's run around this thing, like, enough times he is the boy's age and they like run into him another place in town and that was like really 
disturbing and it was like I liked it, but it also creeped me out. A lot of other stuff has been happening as well, but I don't want to get like too far into it because I don't want to spoil it in case some of you guys want to read this book. I'd love to know if any of you have read this though and what you thought, or if you've read any of Bradbury's other works, what you thought. I've always sort of had Fahrenheit, that one for something, on my radar. But I actually don't know what that book is about or really like if it would be for me. I'm just like going by what other people are saying that they really like it. But I don't know if it's like a genre I would like or a book I would like. I really don't know. I think my favorite thing about this book so far is the setting. You guys know I love like small town settings. And I like the atmosphere and the darkness of the carnival. I feel like my favorite thing about this book is like the atmosphere, I guess, and yeah, just the setting. I'm not like really, I don't know if I feel like the characters are like that well described, so maybe that's why I feel a little bit off about this, or I don't feel off, I just feel not completely connected and maybe it's just because of the main characters maybe they're too young or it's just that they're boys i don't really know anyways i do think i'm gonna enjoy the rest of this and i'm gonna keep reading a little bit later but i started watching the mummy so i'm going to <laughs> finish that and then maybe i'll read in bed before i fall asleep i have forgotten so much of that movie but it's so fun to rewatch. I'm like a third of the way through and it's just very entertaining. I feel like those movies, they're not like cinematic masterpieces, you know? They're just very, very entertaining. And I had forgotten how entertaining they are. And I love the, like the whole opening thing with, I guess it's not the opening, but the bit with, oh my God, I can't remember the character's name, Evelyn, the librarian, her like, bit in the library in the beginning is just so good. The CGI is also on point. You can't tell at all. <laughs> it's really, really funny. Although I feel like, I feel like I've seen like The Mummy 2 and I feel like I remember the CGI in that being so incredibly bad, like really, really bad. I feel like there's like a scorpion thing at the end, but I don't remember. I think I've only watched the second one once. I don't think I liked it that much. I don't really don't remember. I also think there's a third movie, but I am pretty sure I never watched that. Is it any good? <laughs> I feel like The Mummy, the first one, is like a pretty solid movie, and then it just goes downhill with the second one. So I'm guessing it sort of just keeps going down with the third. I don't know, but they stopped making them. So I'm assuming maybe it wasn't that good. I wonder if they're gonna like reboot that at some point. I think that could be really fun, like making that kind of movie, but with today's quality, I think that could be really, really fun. I love those types of movies, but they're really, at least as far as I can tell, there aren't a lot of them. At least I don't know of a lot of them. I know of like The Mummy and Tomb Raider and that's kind of it. I guess there are also those like Robert Langdon movies. So like The Da Vinci Code and Angels and Demons, which are based on Dan Brown's books. I like those two. They're kind of like, I don't know. They're not that good, but they're also just so entertaining. I feel the same way about the books. I really like them just for the entertainment value. I like the historical aspects. I think that's really fun. I guess there's also National Treasure, but uh, yeah, I I, <laughs> I don't know how I feel about like Nicolas Cage. I just can't with that guy. <laughs> this is turning into like a whole movie segment, so sorry about that. I think I'm gonna go watch the rest of The Mummy. I don't remember the ending at all, so I'm kind of excited. I'm sure it's gonna be, sure it's gonna be great. And yeah, I'll probably like, bring this to bed with me and read a little bit before I fall asleep. And yeah, I think that was kind of it. I hope you guys are doing all right and that you're managing to squeeze in some like cozy 
spooky if you like spooky things reading evenings these days because fall is like the coziest time of year and it's important to take some time to yourself and i will see you soon bye